Today, we are going to unbox the contents of the EBC2. This is the control box. Displays green solenoid valve power cable set, silicone tube, gas pressure sensor, gas pressure sensor harness, two air filters. The accessories for the solenoid valve, this for the display screen, O2 sensor wire, and the user manual. The contents are just these. The peripheral accessories for DEBC to have already been installed. First, start by pulling a vacuum hose from the intake side of the turbocharger and route it to the solenoid valve. On the other end, route the vacuum hose to the boost side of the turbocharger. The location of the actuator. Next is Dieter Bockerger's pressure sensor, so, I should place it in this position. It also has a vacuum hose connected to it. In that case, you would route it to the factory intake manifold. It has a pre-drilled hole available. Don't forget to connect the tubing from the turbocharger's pressure sensor to the air filter element. The pressure sensor's lifespan is longer, and it is less prone to failure. The remaining part is the wiring. Following the principle of non-interference, route the wiring to the firewall and then pass it through to the inside of the driver's compartment. With that, the installation is complete. For the engine compartment wiring, bring it into the driver's compartment and connect it to the controller. They are respectively the power wires for the controller, and the connection wires for the solenoid valve, the connection wires for the display unit, the connection wires for the pressure sensor. There is an additional slot available here, which can be used to connect to the oxygen sensor. It can provide protection and adjustments for the air fuel ratio. I haven't connected this wire. With that, the installation is roughly complete. After we have finished installing the DEBC2, let's power it up now. For the new DEBC2, it will require an initial setup before use. The operating method of it. The up button is used to access the settings menu. The mode selection and configuration can be done using the rotary knob. Pressing the down button is also used to go back or return to the previous menu. In the case of the down button, it can switch between four modes. That depends on your preference. To select your desired display mode, in general, I usually switch to this mode, because here you can see the in normal mode, and also your customized A and B mode, and the peak value as well. Sure, let's start with configuring the operational settings now. Let's press the up button. Enter this setting hall. Let's start by configuring the settings for the mode. Yes, the start section is its activation point. Generally, we recommend starting from the lowest setting. Start with the intervention point at 0.1 bar. After setting it, just press the enter key once, then move on to the next key. Next is the duty value. Yes, the duty value represents the initial boost gain of the turbocharger. Let's leave it unchanged for now. We will make adjustments after the actual road test. The gain value depends on the turbo's boost pressure percentage. Let's leave the gain value unchanged for now. Next, the warning value is the most important setting. This should be adjusted based on the safety range of your car, like this car. The factory engine has not been reinforced internally, so I will set the warning at 1 bar as a precaution. Danger is the overpressure relief value, then I will set it slightly higher than the regular warning value, around 1.1 position. Of course, there will be some margin of error, so it varies based on each car's conditions. Just make fine adjustments after that. After setting up, then we can proceed to set the game value. With this game value, Sure, let's go back to the outside now. You can check the values you just set from this boost info section. Next, there are some display settings to configure. We enter from the SET menu, that's the alarm setting, which adjusts the volume of the warning sound, three volume levels and mute. Generally, using the third volume level is clearer, and this is the operation sound setting. You can leave it as it is and not make any changes. Next. This is the brightness adjustment, because I don't like it too bright, so I always adjust it to the darkest setting directly. And this one is for unit switching, available in bar and side units. This one is for left hand drive and right hand drive mode switching. The default setting is right hand drive. Yes, it can be switched to left hand drive mode. It will no longer be inverted.
and this function is quite special. It is the pressure calibration function. Sometimes, when we are at high altitudes, the atmospheric pressure may not be zero. There might be inaccuracies. We can calibrate it based on the local atmospheric pressure. The display will be more accurate, and we still have one reserve hole that is not plugged. This is where you can connect it to the oxygen sensor. Yes, it is compatible with most aftermarket air fuel ratio gauges. Overpressure protection is available to ensure safety, so consumers can expand this part themselves. The basic operation of DEBC2 is as described.